What's up guys, got some Wildstar PvP speculation for you today. I know I've been super PvE oriented on my channel recently, and I promise I'm going to be a really big PvPer in this game as well. It's just the PvE is so good and the beta is very PvE oriented at the moment. The only people that are really level 50 are the, the raiders, and they're raiding, not PvPing, and there's not that many exiles that are PvPing at level 50. So, it's kind of unfortunate, but I have a lot of PvPers in my guild. We constantly talk about this shit pretty much all day. And uh, I think I've got a pretty good basis for my theories here. So, uh, top 3v3 teams, mechanically, the, the, take this with a grain of salt. I'm not talking about, like, OP shit, like, oh, fucking three medics, it's amazing. I'm talking about when the game gets fairly balanced, all the bugs get fixed, things like that. Uh, just the top teams, just based off of mechanics and how the classes work. So, my number one top team. The thing that I think is going to be the best, especially for my playstyle, is Warrior, DPS Warrior, DPS Spellslinger, Esper Healer. This comp is going to be nasty. I think it's going to be uh, very, very strong for multiple reasons. One of them being that it has a ton of unique CC. If you're not, if you're not familiar with the way the CC works in Wildstar, there are no DRs. Or there are DRs, but there aren't DRs like there are in WoW where you have stuns that last half the duration and fears that la last half the duration. The CC is all or none. If I get hit with a knockdown and get hit with a knockdown right after it, I'm immune to the second knockdown. I don't get knocked down for half the time. It's either all or none. So, from what I gather, if you get hit with a knockdown, it's about five seconds until you're going to get hit with another knockdown. So, with that being said, the strength of this comp is that every single class brings a lot of unique CC to the table. So, number one, the warrior. Not, not very much brutal CC. They have a knockdown. But then they also have a grip and a tether, and the grip and the tether share DR with nothing else, and they are very, very good for peeling. Amazingly well for, amazingly good for peeling, the, the best peels in the game. Um, then the Spell Slinger, they have a unique CC in the Disorient. Disorient is where your, your movement keys completely go random, and instead of going forwards, you, your W key makes you go backwards or left or right or whatever. And then, uh, then they also have a stun. And their stun is unique for this particular team comp because the Esper or the Warrior, they don't have any stuns, so that won't DR with anything. Then we have the Esper. The Esper has a knockdown, which will DR with the Warrior knockdown, but if you chain it right, it's not going to because there's going to be more, more than 5 seconds of CC in between the first two knockdowns. So, uh, and then the other, Esper, the other Esper CC, which is a Disarm, which is also a unique CC. So you got two completely unique CCs to those two, two classes which is with the Disarm and the Disorient. Disarm shares no DR with anything else. The Esper is the only class in the game that has it. And with that, they've got to run and find their weapons. So if you do that in combination with the Disorient, so they're running, they're running the wrong way, trying to get their weapon, and you can't do any attacks without a weapon. Can't heal, can't DPS. You can't do anything without a weapon in this game. So, whoo, that's nasty. And then out of that, we've got the uh, the knock the Esper knockdown. So you could do Warrior knockdown, Disarm, Disorient, Stun, Knockdown, and then a Warrior tether, a Warrior grip tether. I mean, you, you have so much CC options, it's insane. And that's not the only reason why this team composition is strong. Augmented Blade from the Warrior is a 40% healing reduction that we have nearly 100% uptime and easily 100% uptime if you tear it up, which I think a lot of people will do. Um, so we've got the 40% Augmented Blade healing reduction from the Warrior that has nearly 100% uptime at base tier. Then we've got the Snares, and the Warrior, which I think everyone will spec into this, has a passive 30% Snare which you can keep up 100% of the time on multiple targets, no problem. You just Whenever you're, whenever one of your ability hits, it's 10%, 10%, 10% to 30%. Then we have Ripsaw, which is another 28%. And these snares stack. They don't stack additively, but they do stack multiplicatively, so it'd be like 28% of 70%. Um, still, you can get them running slow. And those also stack with the Spell Slinger snares, uh, which uh, with fro uh, Freeze, I believe it's called? A chill, freeze, I don't know what it is, but uh, you have you have a lot of snares. Just passive, just running slow as fuck snares that are going to be put on the enemy team. If that's not enough, then you've got grip, you've got tether bolt, you've got all that CC you can use the peel. You've got uh, pretty good damage. If they're going on the spell slinger, then the warrior is going to be going ham. 
And if they go on the Warrior, then oh my god, that's a, the worst decision of your life because at the current moment, Warriors are pretty good at surviving. And we also do more damage because we have more uptime, and if you spec into Fury, then... Whew. So, um... Yeah, so the Spell Slinger is going to be slippery as fuck to hit because you've got, you've got grips, tethers, snares, uh, all that CC you can use to peel. The Warrior, you're dumb as fuck if you go on the Warrior. The Warrior's just going to eat you alive if you go on him. He's, warriors are tough. Warriors have really good survivability. Then if you go on the Esper, which is probably the best kill target, uh, you're going to be eating so much damage from the Spell Slinger, and uh, the, the Spell Slinger left alone is nasty. It is fucking nasty. So you don't really have a good target if you're the enemy team, in my opinion. You're, you're pretty screwed. Just from the sheer amount of peeling, it's going to be so hard for anybody to kill anything on this team. With just, just Tether Bolt alone is the biggest cock block ever. It's a 30 second cooldown that uh, tethers somebody to the ground for 7 seconds, and the only way they can get out of it is to kill the tether. Uh, then we've got the grip, then we've got the... It's crazy. There's, it's going to be hard as crap to kill anything on a Warrior, Spellslinger, DPS, Esper Healer team. It's... I, I don't see it. The only thing... The only weak link I see here is the Esper isn't super mobile, but I think there's so much CC in there that it doesn't matter. Alright, on to the next team. The next team is Stalker, Medic, DPS, anything. This team will be the Beast Cleave of Wildstar if, uh, if it works. Now, this team might be... This is one of the few teams I say on this list that might not work, just because it's very dependent on the pacing of the game. If people die quickly, this this is going to do amazing. If people die slowly, then it's probably not going to be. But, uh, I think it's going to be good uh, with the current pacing of the game. It, for a few patches ago, I thought this wasn't going to be viable because the medic cooldowns involved were really, really long, something like two minutes, so you might get that first cheese kill right off the bat, but then the enemy team still has five more respawns. So, now with these cooldowns being uh, 30 seconds or less, I think you're going to be able to maintain some consistency. So, um, why I think this team is going to be good. Anybody that's playing the beta right now knows medics and stalkers have the highest burst damage of all of the classes. Also, the stalker, for some ungodly reason, uh, I think this might get nerfed, but even if it gets nerfed down to 40%, the stalker has a 60% mortal strike. It doesn't have the same uptime that the warrior one does, I don't think. But it's 60%! 60% Mortal Strike! And it also takes off shields if you spec into it. So both the Stalker and the Medic DPS have uh, shield shield breaking abilities that take away your shield, or shield overloading, that's the proper term, where your shields get overloaded and they don't work for 8 seconds. So it's just your raw health bar for 8 seconds and you can get killed through it. So uh, Coordinated Stalker and Medic with really any healer, I think maybe even a medic healer would work, just because medic healers are the most aggressive uh, with those offensive dispels. Again, I'm not sure how powerful offensive dispels are going to be at launch, but I don't know. It could be good. It just really depends on the pacing of the game. Now on to the next team. This is another team that I'm really excited to play. I don't think it's as good as the first warrior comp I listed, but I think it's going to be good. And it's DPS Warrior, DPS Engineer, Spell Slinger Healer. And the reason I like this is because it's a super, super sustained damage team. And in my opinion, it would only work with a Spell Slinger Healer because they there's not much peels. There's not much really, really hard CC to stop somebody from totally ganking a, an Esper Healer or a Medic Healer. It might work with a Medic Healer because they're more durable, but definitely not an Esper Healer. So, um... The Warrior is a ramp up class, it's sustained damage, it's cleave. All of the Warrior abilities can hit 5 plus targets. And we've got the Warrior Mortal Strike, the war Augmented Blade, which is 40% healing debuff. Engineer, same way but ranged. Builds up, does great sustained damage at range, and guess what? Both the Warrior and the Engineer are both in heavy armor, and heavy armor is a big deal in this game. You take way less damage, so that means that the Warrior and the Engineer it's gonna be hard to kill. It's gonna be hard to kill a warrior and engineer, well, especially with the, uh, the snares. The engineer also has snares. Uh, we've got the grip, the tether. The only real weakness of this team is that the engineer doesn't have mo much mobility uh, at all. That might get changed. I don't know. I think it's something they're looking at right now. But the arena is small. The arena is a pretty small place, and the cleave potential for this for this is big. 
Uh, a lot of the highest damaging abilities in the game can only hit one target, and literally, I think literally every single one of the Warrior and Engineer's abilities can hit multiple targets. This is going to be the WLD AoE Cleave team that just doesn't die, and the Spell Slinger Healer is slippery, and it also brings some CC. Uh, the Engineer has a stun, the Warrior has a knockdown, then we have Disorient and another stun, so not super great when it comes to CC chaining. I think the Esper can stun, it could be the, the, the Engineer stun, the Warrior knockdown, the Disorient, and then another stun, that might be enough time, I'm not sure, but uh, the slipperiness of the Spell Slinger is the main reason why you want to bring him, because there's not that much peels. Engineers, other than that stun, I don't think they have much. Um, I don't think they really have much at all, to be honest, and they're slow, so it's going to be hard for them to catch back up to the situation, like if somebody switches to a healer way over here and the engineer's way over here, it's going to be manual running. The engineer has no leap or jump or anything like that at the moment, but uh, it's going to be hard to kill anything on that team, and the sustained damage would be crazy. Now onto the final team, which is Spell Slinger DPS, Esper DPS, Medic Healer. This is the only comp that I had preferable for a Medic Healer. Medic healer is going to be weird. It, I predicted this a long time ago, but I think that medic healers are either going to be really OP, like godly, or really bad. Because it's going to be hard for Carbine to balance that medium range heal, the medium range healer with the heavier armor. It's different. It's going to be hard for them to do that. So I think at least in, at least for a while, until they, get, until they really get down how the medic class is going to work, uh, it's going to be tough for them to balance it. But the reason why I chose the medic healer for the Spell Slinger Esper comp is because... Neither the Spell Slinger or the Esper has consistent peels. They don't have any, uh, they, they have CC, but it's on long cooldowns. And the, they, there's no way they could keep a, a Spell Slinger healer or an Esper alive against a Stalker or a Warrior. They just have no way to consistently get, get a Stalker or Warrior off of them. Uh, fuck, they have no snares, they have no grips, they have no tethers. They, uh, it's, it's rough. It's rough for the healer. So that medic healer and that medium armor, which is actually better than medium armor, it's more like um, medium... I think it's it's like in between medium and heavy. I think they're at something like 35% on live and warriors are at like 40, 53, something like that. It's, def it's better than medium. It's in between medium and heavy. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. But um, the reason why I think the medic is going to be good is because the medic can afford to not, uh, to not stand by a pillar. The medic can sort of be out in the open because they're they're always out in the open because of the nature of their heals because they're so short range. So the medic's probably going to have more ways to deal with CC and they're going to be tankier. So they can be out in the open, which means that if the DPS go on the medic, then the spell slinger on the Esper can still hit them and not be getting line of sighted. They can still peel with their, their longer CDs. So mm, this is one that I don't think is going to be as good, but I wanted to throw in a medic in some comp at the moment. Um, medic healers, they're going to be weird. They're really... That's the one the one thing I'm really sort of worried about in Wildstar is how the fuck are they going to balance the medic healer in PvP? Because it's... Design-wise, I mean, it's cool. I hope they do it because it's different. It's definitely different, but uh, it's either going to be really good or really bad in my opinion. So, yep. Um, I think that's all I really wanted to say about that comp. Mm, I, don't th I definitely don't think... I have it last on my list. Uh, for comps that I think are going to be really good. Definitely, definitely keep your eye out for Warriors, war, DPS Warrior, DPS Spell Slinger, Esper Healer. I think that is going to be just bananas. Bananas. Uh, anyway, thanks for listening to my rambling. We'll see how right I am in the future if I'm not. Watch like triple fucking healer be amazing. I, whatever. <laughs> so, anyway, have fun. Yeah. The eight egg phase is where everybody fucks up. I kick my egg right there. Uh, that's pretty manageable, but when when eight people have to coordinate eight eggs and not stand on top of each other, it's really easy to accidentally interrupt somebody else's egg or not know where your egg is just because there's...